serious, defense attorneys of Reddit, what is the worst offense you've ever had to defend? Public defender here. I once represented an 11 year old charged with forcible sodomy against another 11 year old. You will often see kids charged with molesting other kids. But it's rare to get a juvenile defendant that young. Sometimes the parents are overreacting to two kids playing doctor. Sometimes it's evidence that the kids themselves have been molested by an adult. Juvenile cases get complicated. Juvenilistic cases get absurdly complicated. Between draconian laws that aren't really designed for juveniles. Competency issues. How do you get a knowing, intelligent, and voluntary plea from a child and moronic parents? It can get pretty overwhelming. The summer after my first year in law school I worked in the public defender's office. Numerous attorneys had to defend clients who had allegedly sexually assaulted infants and toddlers. I guess in order to cope with doing that a lot of them made jokes out of it. I would hear somebody talking about a case and an attorney would say something like yeah but did you see how that baby was dressed? She was asking for it. I never knew how to feel about that. Horrible and distasteful. But they have to stand in court and represent those people. They can't get out of the case. I don't know man. Posted elsewhere. But I defended a guy who sent poop through the mail to his ex-GF from state prison. I don't know how it got past prison officials. But it did. And he didn't deny sending it. However, we went to trial because he wanted me to argue that the poop was expressive speech. And thus protected by the first amendment. We lost. TL. DR. It case. We lost. Worst had to be the gentleman who spent years raping his stepdaughter. He videotaped it. So we had to watch a trial. We knew the reason he insisted on going to trial because he wanted to see video again. I have previously told this story here. I had a brilliant gentleman on probation for narcotics trafficking and was not permitted to own user cell phone. He went in for a drug test with his probation officer, and his cell rang in his pocket. The PO went to take the phone from his pocket and also pulled out a large baggie of sugar that he brought to his drug test. Not worst in so much as it was serious, but worst as in. Geez do I really have to do this? One time I was trying to defend a guy that was alleged to have thrown his own piss in a woman's face. The kicker? The guy was an inmate and the woman was a guard at the prison. So it really takes things up a notch penalty wise. Our defense, her face tested positive furia, a substance that is in human piss, but is also in an enormous variety of female beauty products. We had to basically argue that she put the piss on her own face through one of these products and they couldn't prove the defendant didn't just throw water on her. I mean, I feel bad for the guard. I wouldn't want someone to throw piss in my face equals. No details. Because of confidentiality, I had to work on a file doing research. The specific issues were whether it is possible to have accidental anal penetration, i.e., whether wrong hole is ever a real thing, and if so, if it could result in a rectovial fistula, tearing the ass and V together to make one big unhappy hole. Short answers. Apparently yes. Risk factors include a sexual inexperience, inebriation, and the dark. Apparently yes. Apparently there are very rare cases of consensual veal intercourse doing the same thing. So, UHH, I hope that image doesn't hit you at an inopportune moment. Defended an old guy driver who hit and killed a mentally challenged girl who had run across six lanes of traffic against the signal. The guy did nothing wrong. The worst part about the situation was that we were being paid by the dead girl's family's insurance company, who the family was suing for benefits. Well, violent rapes, and I don't just mean that the act was accomplished by force, I mean the victim was beaten, sodomized with a broomstick, etc., are never easy, particularly because rapists tend to be extreme narcissists who are very angry at women because reasons. Elliot Roger, the 2014 Santa Barbara killer, is a good example of the type, and was much more articulate than most, the narcissism makes defending them a real chore. Because they tend to be delusional, the victim will never testify, less creepily, and setting aside soft sits and their ilk. I had a fellow who was dealing crack in a local bar when the cops did a closing check and recognized him as someone whose parole conditions prohibited him from being in bars. He brightly fled to the men's room, dead end, to flush his dope but they were right on his heels. 
so they had him. This frustrated him so badly that he pooped his pants and tried to fling the resulting product at the officers. He was never really clear on why I didn't think this was a triable case. Public defender here. Matter of public record. Still our duty of confidentiality. All that jazz. A client of our office was convicted of assault, defined as a non-consensual physical contact, with sexual motivation. The alleged victim being the 6 year old niece of the defendant making it also a crime of domestic violence. It's by far the darkest case I've been assigned. I can say, without reservation, that he got a fair shake. Although the offense itself wasn't particularly repugnant, I once had to defend someone who had been charged for driving with a suspended license because he was, quite honestly, in his and my opinion, on his way to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting to prevent himself from drinking. He was a very serious alcoholic who had been convicted of impaired driving several times, and he had found that the only way he could stay sober was by attending AA meetings regularly. On this particular day, his license was suspended because of a prior conviction. He lived quite a distance outside of town, and his friend who typically drove him into town cancelled at the last minute, in a panic, worried that without attending the meeting he would relapse, and inevitably end up hurting someone else, quite possibly by driving in bed again. He drove his own vehicle, stone cold sober, into town. On the way, he was stopped by the police and charged with driving with a suspended license. In court, I wasn't sure whether to tell the judge that despite the delay on the roadside and the laying of a very serious additional criminal charge to this poor guy's history, he managed to call his AA sponsor who picked him up on the side of the highway and drove him to the meeting just in time to arrive only a few minutes late and stay sober for an additional 24 hours, albeit with a reduced likelihood of the same positive outcome on the sobriety front the following day. I'm a law clerk at a criminal defense firm. We take cases on appeal after the client has already pled guilty or been found guilty at trial. One of our clients is a convicted serial child molester. But some of the offenses occurred when he was a juvenile himself, under 17 in my state, which the law treats differently. I was tasked with going through the paperwork we received and figuring out which victims he molested when he was an adult and which victims he molested when he was a juvenile to calculate his correct punishment range. Problem is, the official court documents all name the victims with pseudonyms, John Doe, etc. While the police reports use their actual names, there is no legend or index in the file to tell me which victim is which, and it's cheaper for my bosses to pay me to figure it out than to force the government to turn over a list. So I had to match the child victims to their cod names based on their biographical details and their accounts of the abuse. An Boz Child A is black, around age 9, and was touched around the genitals and anus with the defendant's fingers. Timmy Smith is black, and matches Child A's time frame, but his report only mentions the defendant's tongue on his anus, not the fingers. There are no other black victims. I believe there is a 90% chance that Child A is Timmy Smith and so on. I'm so glad that I will be moving into prosecution in a month or so. Immigration law often intersects with criminal defense law. Since having criminal convictions will get you banned from or kicked out of many countries. In my first year of practicing, I had to argue for a man convicted of molesting his young daughters to be allowed into my country in order to help care for his disabled young step-granddaughter. Reading the details of what he did to his daughters, who were around the ages of 6-8, was horrifying. The now adult daughters wrote letters saying they'd forgiven him and had no problems trusting him around their own children. I just couldn't stop thinking that this guy was possibly going to be left alone with a little girl who couldn't move or talk, let alone defend herself from a convicted pedophile. Not that children should be expected to be able to defend themselves from a grown man. A weird one was a guy who had a felony conviction for threatening and planning to kill his previous attorney. He needed to clear up this issue because of a job opportunity in my country. He sent me this bizarre manifesto about the government's conspiracies to poison people via tap water, and how it was all the fault of the homosexual girly men in powerful positions. I was scared I'd be his next target, because he clearly had severe and treated mental health issues and all it would take was one lazy or sloppy border officer to let him slip through. Prior public defender. Child assaults sexual assaults are the worst. That aside, 
I once defended a very, very nice 80 ish year old man who had been married like 50 years. Several kids, grandkids, and great grandkids. He'd been charged with sexual acts with a horse. Turns out most of the community knew he'd been sexually interacting with livestock for many years and they'd usually look the other way but I guess he went too far with the horse. He pled guilty to the felony but of course got no jail time. I hated representing child molesters. A gravitated sexual assault of a child. If the allegation came from a wife during divorce proceedings. Then I always thought that I had a chance because it was common to allege that in order to deny visitation. Tell the policeman judge that daddy touched you. I always felt bad for the 19 year old with the 15 year old. When it was consensual but the 15 year old girl doesn't have the legal authority to consent so the teenager boy would be rung up for act 6 assault of a child. In other cultures and other countries, a 19 year old with a 15 year old is accepted but in my state, it's a second degree felony. The stepfather stepdaughter. If I had one of those cases, the guy was guilty 99 out of 100 times. The thing that made me sick would be the you don't understand. She wanted me line. Really? She's 11 and you're 39. The worst. The biological father feeling up his daughter. He'd wait by the bathroom door as she would finish her shower and pull her towel off and feel her up. Saying I'm your father. I have a right to see how you're developing. This went on for years until she finally got sick of it and told a teacher. Who told the cops? She was 14 when she'd finally got up the guts to turn in her own dad. He ran off before the case was resolved but he was caught many years later. When his daughter was a full grown adult. And she didn't want to revisit those days. So some lesser charge was worked out by some different attorney. I quit accepting those cases 15 years ago. I defended a guy in preliminary hearing who was accused of raping his daughter. It was awful because she was very graphic. I did my best to limit the scope of her answers for the sake of my own sanity. Throw away. I will not say what he got, as it may lead to a way to find the case. But long story short, guy was accused of molesting his granddaughter and she was pregnant from it. Capital I, along with the state became confused on the DNA of the grandchild's child. We learned that his grandchild was the product of abuse on his own daughter. So he was the grandfather father of the complainant and the great grandfather father of the complainant's child. Without getting into too many details that would breach confidentiality, I defended a guy charged with one of those Craigslist reverse Chris Hansen type stings. Stopped doing that type of defense after that case and went back to DUI, DWLS, and traffic tickets. Oh. I also had a guy stand out of a sunroof and point an AR-15 at an undercover cop. Guy was on probation when this happened. Coworker represented a guy that beat and burned a kitten and recorded it. He had to watch the video and she came to my office crying after. Duck that guy. So in my state if you are in a relationship with someone or had been and you commit certain crimes they get tagged as domestic violence. This tag gives additional penalties. Long story short. My client received a blowjob from a girl and then hit her. We went to trial because the state wanted to say that one blowjob was a relationship and my guy didn't want to do the domestic violence classes. So we took it to the jury who ruled that one blowjob isn't a relationship. I always have wondered how many blowjobs is a relationship. I had a client who was a narco in Colombia extradited to the US. Killed more people than he could count. Actually lost track. A guy who made videotapes of himself having sex with his 6 year old daughter. A guy who killed another person in a road rage incident and shot his dog. Straffed bullets across the windshield to scare the guy's wife then went home and went to bed. I could go on for days. Edit. Phone autocorrect defeats me again. Worst I had was when my client was charged with impersonating a police officer. It was the worst because it was so ridiculous. He was 70 years old and was going to the social security office. When he went through the metal detector he had a police shield that he put in the tray with his keys and phone. He collected police memorabilia and liked to carry it around. The guard at the metal detector arrested him. A guy who beat his 16 year old daughter with a board and insisted on invoking his Christian values as a defense. Not the worst crime ever by any measure but seriously? Duck off. Dude. Worst offense? That's pretty subjective. I've defended Akka said 6 offenders. 
accused murderers, etc. I suppose the worst one was 9 counts of capital sexual battery, tough case. The 90 year old woman who routinely smuggled drugs in her V into prisons was more interesting than most. The gang murderers are pretty routine at this point. As a young lady, it's the ones who aren't killing in the name of territory, street cred, etc. That get to me. I was really affected by a particularly brutal, cold, calculated, sick 30 something man accused of murder. He was eerily calm and cocky about his an encounter with an underage girl he met and chatted up for about 20 minutes that resulted ultimately in her drowning with suspicious surrounding circumstances. He was obviously disturbed and it was very unsettling just being near him. Images of him smiling for the news cameras in the courtroom will weirdly pop into my head on a somewhat random basis and it still gives me the heebie-jeebies. The act he put on when he insisted upon being put on the stand in trial ruined him. He would have walked but for his ridiculous testimony. Within seconds the jury, who had been paying close attention previously, looked horrified as he told these stories and stopped taking notes. Their minds were made up as soon as he opened his creepy mouth. He was quickly convicted. We did a really stellar job in his case. But he dug his own grave. Justice was served.